Did you know that blood pressure medications could be skyrocketing your triglycerides by 40%? And it's not only blood pressure meds. Many drugs can have a similar impact. Most doctors never warn their patients about these medication side effects, leaving millions of people at risk for heart attacks and strokes without even knowing it. So today, we're exposing the 9 most dangerous medications that can raise triglycerides. And more importantly, showing you exactly what to do about it if you're taking any of them. You'll not only discover which medications to watch out for, but also learn how to tell if your medication is affecting your triglycerides, simple alternatives you can discuss with your doctor, and the exact questions to ask at your next checkup to protect yourself. You should never stop taking your medication based on this or any other YouTube video, but you will learn what to look out for and potential steps to protect your health. First, let's talk about anabolic steroids. When most people think about anabolic steroids, they think of bodybuilders trying to shortcut their muscle gains, but these powerful substances can do serious harm. Steroids significantly alter how your liver processes fat, skyrocketing triglyceride levels. Studies show these changes can happen quickly too, within just 9 weeks of starting them. That said, triglyceride changes do appear to be temporary, typically returning to normal within 5 months of stopping the steroids. However, anabolic steroids are also linked to other serious problems too, including high blood pressure, enlargement of the heart muscles, heart attacks, and sudden death. We'll discuss other types of steroids later, but ultimately, unless you really need an anabolic steroid, stay away from them. Next. Let's talk about diuretics, often called water pills. Diuretics are used for treating high blood pressure and heart failure. Many people don't think twice about them because they seem harmless. They simply help your body get rid of excess fluid, right? But studies have shown they can raise triglyceride levels by 5 to 15%. Not the worst on our list, but not great either. There are two main types to be aware of thiazide diuretics and loop diuretics. Thiazide diuretics, especially at higher doses of 50mg or more per day, can significantly increase triglyceride levels. It's ironic that a pill meant to protect your heart could quietly add to its risks. Loop diuretics like furosemide also show similar effects to thiazides. Scientists believe it might be related to how they affect insulin in your body. When insulin function is impaired, it can lead to excessive triglycerides. Women who have been through menopause seem to be most affected. It's important to state here that you should never stop taking any medication based on what you see in a YouTube video. However, if you're taking a diuretic, it's worth talking to your doctor about your options. And get your triglyceride levels tested regularly. At number 7, we have another blood pressure medication. Beta blockers. Beta blockers can also affect your triglyceride levels, and often more significantly than diuretics. Studies show they can increase triglycerides by up to 40%, depending on a few factors. Beta blockers can interfere with an enzyme called lipoprotein lipase, which normally breaks down fats in your body. When this enzyme isn't working well, it can lead to both higher triglycerides and weight gain. They can also affect how your blood vessels function, potentially making the situation much worse. But not all beta blockers are created equal. Some newer ones, particularly those with vasodilating properties, may have less impact compared to older versions like metaprolol and atenolol. This is because newer versions help blood vessels relax and don't interfere with insulin as much as older types. If you're taking an older beta blocker and are concerned about your triglyceride levels, ask your doctor whether a newer version might be better. Next, we have estrogen. Artificial estrogen, commonly used in hormone therapy and birth control pills, has been shown to significantly increase triglyceride levels. What's particularly concerning is that in women who already have high triglycerides, adding fake estrogen into the mix can easily trigger pancreatitis. 
In turn, pancreatitis can cause even more serious issues like diabetes, nutrient deficiencies, painful cysts, kidney failure, and breathing problems. Taking estrogen by mouth is one of the worst offenders, because it changes how your liver processes fats, increasing the production of very low-density lipoprotein, or VLDL cholesterol. This can also block important enzymes that clear triglycerides from your blood. Now, the risk isn't the same for everyone. If you already have high triglycerides, you're at greater risk. It can also be worse if you're taking cyclic treatments, like contraceptive pills or hormone replacement, taken in monthly cycles. The delivery method can also make a difference. Studies show that applying estrogen through the skin, like using patches or creams, typically doesn't cause the same level of problem. This is because the medication bypasses the liver's first pass metabolism, resulting in less impact on triglycerides. For postmenopausal women who need hormone therapy and also have high triglycerides, researchers often recommend switching to skin applications. Similarly, women using oral contraceptives who develop high triglycerides might benefit from switching to preparations with lower estrogen doses. Next, we have some common medications for breast cancer and prostate cancer. Tamoxifen, a medication used to treat breast cancer, has been linked to major increases in triglycerides. In some cases, it can be severe enough to cause acute pancreatitis. For men undergoing prostate cancer treatment, androgen deprivation therapy, or ADT, can push triglycerides to dangerous levels as well. Studies show that these treatments can increase triglycerides up to 25%. They can also cause other problems like increased body fat, reduced muscle mass, and out-of-control insulin resistance. These can be unfortunate side effects of much-needed treatment, but alternative options are available. In certain breast cancer cases, doctors may suggest aromatase inhibitors, like anastrozole, or letrozole, particularly for postmenopausal women. These impact estrogen differently and may have a lesser impact on triglycerides. For prostate cancer, depending on the stage, newer forms of ADT or combination therapies are possible, though they might not be suitable for everyone. Lifestyle changes are also essential. Patients are advised to adopt a heart-healthy diet that's low in refined carbs, because eating refined carbohydrates like bread or pasta is a leading cause of high triglycerides. Likewise, regular exercise can counterbalance some of the body composition changes and help regulate triglyceride levels. And of course, monitoring with blood tests is key. Frequent checks of lipid levels, blood glucose, and liver function allow for early detection of any concerning changes making it easier to adjust treatment plans if needed. Is this useful? Please click the like button, click subscribe, and turn notifications on to see more heart-healthy videos as we release them. And number four, interferons. Interferons are used to treat various conditions, including cancers and viral infections. Their effect varies significantly from person to person. In one study, a quarter of patients saw their triglyceride levels more than double from the starting point. Interferons appear to block lipoprotein lipase and stimulates the liver to produce more triglycerides. These effects have been seen not just in one type of treatment, but across different forms of interferon, including the longer-acting versions, often considered lower risk. If you're receiving interferon treatment, your doctor may consider prescribing medications to help manage high triglycerides if they become a concern. Beyond that, a healthy diet and exercise are key. And at number three, we have antipsychotic medications. Both older and newer antipsychotic medications can affect your triglyceride levels, but in different ways. These medications are essential for controlling psychiatric conditions but their effects on blood fats deserve attention. The first generation of antipsychotics, known as typical antipsychotics, have been shown to raise triglyceride levels by about 22% after a year of treatment. However, it's the second generation, or atypical antipsychotics, that are really worrying. 
These medications can increase triglyceride levels by up to 50%, according to some studies. The effect appears to be connected to changes in a hormone called leptin, which plays a key role in how your body processes fats. Leptin is also the vital hormone that signals to your brain whether you're hungry. Because antipsychotics, especially second-generation medications, interfere with leptin, people taking them often experience uncontrollable hunger and weight gain. Unfortunately, data shows that people taking these drugs generally have lower access to quality healthcare for a variety of reasons, and may already face increased cardiovascular risks. So if you or a loved one is taking these medications, make sure the doctor tests triglyceride levels regularly. If high triglycerides become a problem, there are options. Alternative medications comparatively lower triglyceride risk, but come with their own considerations. At number 2, immunosuppressive drugs can be problematic. If you've had an organ transplant, you're likely familiar with medications like cyclosporine and tacrolimus. These immunosuppressives are crucial for preventing organ rejection, but they can significantly affect your triglyceride levels. In fact, high triglycerides are incredibly common after transplants, affecting up to 60% of patients. This happens due to a combination of factors, post-transplant weight gain, multiple medications, and the immunosuppressant medications themselves. Between the two main medications, cyclosporine tends to be worse than tacrolimus. In fact, a study of heart transplant patients found that after 12 months, those taking cyclosporine had significantly higher triglyceride levels than those taking tacrolimus. The effect is also dose dependent, meaning the higher your dose, the higher your triglyceride levels will increase. Managing high triglycerides after transplant can be tricky. While certain other drugs can help, they need to be used carefully because of potential interactions with immunosuppressants. If you're experiencing high triglycerides after transplant, keep in constant contact with your doctor, because high triglycerides can significantly damage health outcomes, and there are often extra steps that can help. And at number one, we have corticosteroids. Corticosteroids are used to treat a wide range of conditions, from asthma to rheumatoid arthritis. The way they affect your triglycerides is complex. They can redistribute body fat, typically moving it to your upper body and face while reducing it in your limbs. This redistribution affects how your cells respond to insulin, which can lead to an accumulation of triglycerides. In your liver, steroids can increase fat while reducing your body's ability to burn fat. Think of it as simultaneously stepping on both the gas and the brake pedals of your body's fat metabolism. For many chronic conditions, avoiding steroids isn't possible. If you need long-term steroid therapy, it's important to understand these risks and work with your doctor to minimize them. Likewise, make sure you're regularly eating the foods in our video on the best foods to naturally reduce triglycerides. These can make an enormous difference. Also, remember to click like and subscribe.